We're going to ask that you turn with us. I've got so many places I would love to. Uh, let's turn to Hebrews 11 and 40. <clears throat> this is a, a, a series, and of course I won't be able to finish this tonight. This is basically uh, a foundational type of message that I'll be preaching tonight. And uh, we want you from there to turn with us to Second Colossians, or I mean Colossians two ten, and then Second Peter one, Amen. So Hebrews eleven forty, <clears throat> Amen. God having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. You love the Lord. Colossians 2.10. Amen. Colossians 2 and 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. Second Peter, please. First chapter. We'll start reading at the fourth verse. According as his divine power. Let's let's read the second verse. I'm sorry. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I really want you to really take uh, note uh, at Peter what he's saying here. Grace and peace. Amen. Because he's getting ready to deliver something that uh, is a powerful thing. We don't have to uh, fret or worry, but we should be consistent. According as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Now I want you to see where Peter's coming. He says, according as his divine power, his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life. And godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to his to glory and virtue. Now, if you could just hold that right there and flip to the 11th verse of the same chapter. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly on, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that this 11th verse could not be fulfilled completely until our day. We need a Malachi 05. We need an Elijah. And I bring that out in the message how that Elijah, Brother Branham of our day, was given that ministry of entrance where we would know how to enter. Because remember, Amen. That uh, uh, Matthew 25, uh, we realized we had five wise and five foolish. But the five went in. The Bible never told us other, how they got there other than that they had oil and extra. Okay? Oil and extra oil. Amen? That's what makes the difference between us and denominationals. Is because God in this last day gave us extra oil. All right? Let's go back. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partaker of the divine nature, having escape, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So by having the divine nature or being partakers of it, that means God give each and every one of us a part. Amen. Amen. Uh, And by having this, we escape uh, the corruption that is in the world through lust. 
And understand he just uses plural lust because it's lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. And beside this, giving all diligence to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charities. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And have forgotten that he was purged from his sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered. I love that unto you abundantly. Into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord, as humbly as we know how. We thank you for your mighty grace and mercy and love that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we come here to lift you up and to glorify your holy name. There are no words to express our gratitude for the love divine that have been ministered unto us through your servant Elijah. And Father, we thank you right now for the words of life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I'd like to entitle this message, uh, Complete in Him. Completion is my theme, uh, wherein we realize by the grace of God that they cannot be perfect without us. You know, that really struck me in my studying, and I really believe that it is just the season that we're living in. We have heard, and I want you to go home, by the grace of God, at some point in time, and listen to Statue of a Perfect Man. Listen carefully, amen, because I really believe that that's the season that we're living in. Everything else is gathering, and I believe that the bride of Jesus Christ is gathering too. You see... Uh, the, the denominational churches cannot produce a people for a rapture uh, because the rapture, amen, will consist of people who are without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. I often wondered what that really was, amen, and how was that going to be uh, possible for those of us who were born sinful and of sinful flesh, But in Peter, Peter is basically telling us that in this last day that God will fill you, amen, completely with his divine nature. Because he is the only one who was without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. That is the only way that we can make a rapture. It doesn't mean that we uh, won't be saved because the five foolish were saved. They weren't complete as the five wise were complete. Now I want you to know something that God has shown me tonight, amen, according to James 1 and 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. So we understand calling and crying out for these virtues of Christ, doesn't mean that they're going to come instantaneously. But we understand, as our brother Branham have said, that every virtue is a victory. There is a conquering of self, self self-pride, self-ambitions, self-everything that comes with self. It is a conquering of self. Is that right? Amen. And so we realize by the grace of God, Amen, that we are living in, oh my, the most exciting age of of, of all time. We realize, amen, that God has done a mighty work, amen, in our day. And, you know, as the prophet of God said on that message, he said, you ought to seek these virtues every day. Every day until you are completely filled or satisfied or you can see it. Amen. Living its way through you. It will not be something. Amen. That you will mistaken. 
it will be the literal life of Christ living in you. Now, I'm going to throw some things out because he said, listen, before these things can be added to you, you must first be born again. Now, I know what people say, uh, uh, but they, you know, that I've had many uh, ways I've heard people say it. But, you know, I asked the Lord and I says, God, I said, now, if I wanted to know exactly what to do uh, in order to make a rapture, seeing that you have ordained Brother Branham uh, to uh, minister this to us, I, I said to myself, you know, what if I've got one tape? What, what if just one book or one tape is given to me? Which tape would it be? And the Lord showed me the statue of a perfect man. Uh, and when I, I said that, I asked that today, I've heard it. I've, I've had witnesses, amen. But personally, I needed to know because I realized, amen, there's so much in there that personally I had myself missed. Salvation in itself come by way of election. This is not something that you and I can manufacture. It is not something that you can put on, like Brother Branham said, you know, a black bird trying to put in peacock feathers. It is beyond any human effort that this thing is actually done. So I want to just try to take my time tonight, and like I said, this is almost, this is somewhat like the foundation. I try to, uh, by the grace of God, really, a minister Sunday morning and evening uh, just to get it all cleared out. But I'm so glad that you all who are here can hear by the grace of God what the Lord has in store for us. In Isaiah 66 and 1, it said, Thus said the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me, and where is the place of my rest. For all those things have mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. First of all, amen, you, there, there's a condition. I believe that the Holy Spirit has to get each and every one of us into and that condition is a poor and contrite spirit and one who can truly tremble or fear the word of the Lord now if you would just turn with me by the grace of God to James 4 2 you'll say well Lord maybe you would say well God I've been praying and uh, you know I'm not there yet well it all depends on what you're praying for we're not here praying to be greater than one or the other. Uh, but we're, 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 we're praying that God's word will be made manifest in us. Amen. See, we're not in the seventh age. But this message brings us into what Brother Branham called the eternal age. You can say the eighth age, however you want to say it. But Brother Branham basically said it is an eternal age. Right? Amen. So this age that we have been birthed into is eternal. Amen. Amen. So anyway, let's go on to James 4, 2. It says, let, let's start at the first verse. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that you war in your members? Ye lust and ye have not. Ye kill and desire to have. And cannot obtain. You fight and war. And yet you have not. Because you ask not. So our condition. That we are now standing in. Is not because God's word has failed us. But our motive and our objectives in life. Have been the cause of our condition. Now if you really want God. The Bible said that if we ask in faith. God will give it to you liberally, and he will not upbraid, right? In other words, God is waiting on us to ask. Not only to ask, but to receive. See, because we have been so guilty in the past of listening to the prophet's message and walking away and just saying it's good. 
But the prophet of God also preached a message hearing, receiving, and acting. So how in the world are we going to act on what God would have us to bring forth? Now, you and I realize by the grace of God that you must first have the seed. Because without the seed, it cannot be a production of Christ. It won't work. It's like going to the soil of a place expecting an apple tree when the seed was never planted. So the seed has to be planted in you, and that seed must have had been planted, amen, before the foundation of the world. Now, it's the seed in you, because I want you to understand it's the seed in you. And Brother Branham goes along in the second coming. He says, and I give you an acorn. You have an acorn tree potentially. But it's in the seed form. You cannot say you have actually got a tree until the seed has produced a tree. Hello, somebody. So how you understand the tree of life must be produced in you. It can't just remain in seed form. Right? Now, once the life is quickened in you, that means that seed has now began to grow. Brother Branham said, in that seed, we have everything, everything to make a rapture. See? So God didn't even leave it in your hand. He placed it in the seed. But if the seed is in there, It will cause you to act and behave in a certain way, right? So I want to say by the grace of God that, listen, because you're thirsting for more righteousness, that is such a great thing. But you don't just thirst without seeking for the water, right? You don't just thirst for righteousness and say, I'm thirsty, and you're not seeking for more of it, right? Because here, amen, in the uh, message time of a decision, he said the word of God is a seed, and a seed is planted in the ground, and if that seed is watered, it springs forth into life, if it's a germatized seed. Jesus said the word was a seed. Then if the seed was falling into your heart, and you water that seed by faith, believing it'll bring forth just after its kind. Or you can put it on record. And after 30 years of preaching, I can say this, that I have never one time sincerely ever asked God for anything and committed it to him. He either gave it to me or he told me why he couldn't do it. And if you take the right mental attitude toward any divine promise God has made, it'll bring it to pass. So if you look at Peter and add to your faith virtue, knowledge, all, if you take the right mental attitude behind it, amen, here he says, God will bring it to pass. If you just simply say it's God's word, it's not for me to try to figure it out, that's God's business. He spoke it. That's all's necessary. Yes, Something will take place. Yes, if there has been any to the glory of honor of God, I have no education to be a preacher, and God knows I'm not a healer. So he's basically saying, I've done nothing other than take God at his word. Amen. And because there's a seed in it, it was quick and it was dramatized. Amen. And it brought forth. Oh, my God. Oh, let me read another one. Token. And when anything sealed inside of a seal, you better not break it. Can't break it. You, not God's seal. No, for you are, you grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. And when the body's raised up, it's a seed, a sign. That's the seed has been germatized with eternal life. Zoe, my own life, and I raise it up 
at the last day. And as you walk, you have confidence that the life of Christ is in you and you are in him. By one spirit, we're baptized into one body and sealed there by the Holy Ghost among these believers like this until the day that Jesus raises us up. Apply the token. That's what it means to us. We expect the sacrifice to give us life, and it does. Amen. Then it gives us the token, and we apply the token, which is sealed. See, being partakers of this seal. Remember the scripture said we first believed. We received the Holy Ghost and then was sealed. So you got to understand this is a process. And a tree doesn't grow overnight. But you got to realize that those who make a rapture in this day will be those who are mature, who are crowned with divine love. Don't get nervous because if you're ordained to it, nothing can make you stop, can't keep you from it. Right? Come on, somebody. Now, listen. He, this is what Brother Branham said. He says, listen, I have obtained this faith. And I'm addressing this to them that has obtained the like precious faith. It's not to the outside world. This is to the church, those that are in Christ. And he's explaining Peter. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and through uh, uh, of Jesus Christ our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things, his Divine power now has given unto us all things. Now, watch this because every church age had a virtue. But in this age, all things, all of the virtues have been given to the bride of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, somebody. It was only in this age, all things pertaining to Jesus Christ could be given. This is the only age. And so therefore we needed an Elijah, we needed a ministry that could show us how to obtain these things that Peter is talking about. Right? Because most churches said if you just believe. You know, they say, well, you know, you don't have to do all of that. You know, you saved by grace. You know, in some ways they're right, but let me tell you something. If you don't follow the message of your hour, you're going to be left behind. And when I say follow, I don't mean mentally. I mean step by step by step. Remember I said the other night, amen, it is the shepherd that leads. It is the sheep that follow, right? Nothing gets ahead of the shepherd except the goat. Come on. Everything else, lead the shepherd, the sheep. The shepherd, the sheep. I read that to you last week. And so you and I must understand that God has an order. Right? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm glad you're keeping it low because I don't want to preach. I want to teach just like this here. Whereby we are given unto, given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by thee. We might be partakers of divine nature. Now let that soak real deep. Now preaching this, we're just teaching this lesson. Divine nature, right? We are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature. Now I want to say this by the grace of God because we've had seven church ages, seven angels, seven virtues. And seven is completion. And the word of God said we are complete in him. Right? So the very things that, so you can't say these virtues cannot be obtained. you got ages that have already done it. Those who made up the bride in each age obtained that virtue. That's why here uh, Paul tells us, They cannot be complete. In Hebrew, they cannot be complete because we are the ones that 
Actually, the literal capstone comes down on. We display divine love which seals in all the other church ages. Come on, somebody. Amen. And when we seal, see, they can't. We say, well, Lord, let the rapture come. They can't. They can't get up. They cannot even come back until you and I are displaying divine love. You and I, we're the hold up. And you know why? Because we're not seeking him every day. Uh, that thing hit me and struck me so hard. Lord, help me to seek you every day. Add to me, Lord. See, because the Bible said, can any man add a cubit to his statue? You know, if we could do that, we'd go zoop. We'll finish it off. But you see, the greatest victories are the, are the greater the battle, the sweeter the victory. And God put us in this place to be tried and tested. Remember I told you, amen, when tried in the fire, you've been invited. The Bible said, come on, go, be tried in the fire. And you say, yes, Lord. So you answered that call because you recognized you were gold. Only the gold could recognize it, right? Only the gold could respond to the invitation. Oh, come on, somebody. That, that makes me feel good. Amen. Amen. To know that I'm gold. Amen. And I've come this way so the fire can prove Amen. that I'm gold. Amen. Hmm? All the tests going to come. The trials going to come. That's all right. It's foreordained. It's predestinated. Amen. If Ephesus made it, I can make it. Amen. If Smyrna made it, I can make it. All the way down, if, if Philadelphia made it, I can make it. Come on, somebody. Why? Because they could not have made it either without grace and peace. Hmm? Every Christian. He says, I'm an old veteran. He says, look at brother and sister kid here. They're probably oldest in the building. But if I ask them, what is your heart's desire? They'd say, it, it'll be closer to God. See, when you, learn to, when you learn of Christ, there's something about him that's so loving, you just try to get right into him. Excuse this expression. I told my wife here not long ago, both getting old, and I said unto her, do you love me like you used to? And she said, I certainly do. And I said, you know, I love you so much till I would like to take you and pull you inside of me. So we would just be really one. He says, boy, he says, now multiply that. Listen, a hundred million. And then you'll find out how that the believer who falls in love with Christ want to get into him because it's a love. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a thirst. That's a desire. That will not leave you until it's done. Amen. My daughter Clara is pregnant and she was telling me about those cravings. And, you know, she loved to exercise and she pre thought she was right now. And she said and when she got pregnant, it caught her by a uh, surprise. And the first thing she said, Daddy did this. <laughs> and Daddy did. Because I have been crying out to the Lord. Amen. Fix it. Give her a child. And God did it. Lord. Hello, somebody. Lord. Now, my thing was, amen, she, she says, Daddy, you know, these cravings, she'd probably get mad at me if I tell her this. She said, these cravings, she says, not only did I go by uh, to Potley and, and get me was one sandwich, she said, I got me two just in case I might want the second one later. And she said, oh, Daddy, she said, and think about it. I had such a desire for Taco Bell. <laughs> now, oh, she says, I know this is wrong. <laughs> and maybe I'm expressing my fat feelings, but what it is, there's a life in there. When that life craves, I asked my daughter, this says, it's so strong, you've got to do something about it. And she says, nothing else will satisfy Come on, somebody. Amen. That's how it is with God. Amen. 
Nothing else would satisfy that craving that's on the inside, that thirst to be just like him. Nothing, nothing. But once so, what's so wonderful about it, my brothers? The Bible said, if you thirst and hunger for righteousness, you shall be filled. Hey, is that a promise or not? That is truly the promises of God. The thing about it is, we must learn how to respect. You know, there's no respect to or for the things of God. That's the problem. You know, we have hearted sacrifices given to the Lord. I think about it, and I was reading the scripture, and I thought to myself, Lord, show me what this is all about. And I'm going to read it to you. Somehow I, I, I missed what chapter I got it from, but you can look it up if you like, if you write a few words down. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he's blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also would choose their delusion and would bring their fears upon them, because when I call, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delight not. Hear with the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hateth you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city. A voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemy. And, and the Bible tells us by the grace of God, listen, what is it? Oftentimes we come in church, we give him halfway praises. Oh, come on, somebody. It's true. We, we, we offer up something that, you know, is, is equivalent to slaying a man or, you know, bringing in a dog or, you know what I mean, something that, and that's the way he looks at it. When there is no joy in it, when there is no, uh, you know, uh, excitement or, you know, uh, 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 being thankful or grateful, this is the way God looks at it. And really, when you're in that condition, you're not serving God. You're serving yourself. Listen, coming from a quote under statue, I got... Get the birth into you, and it will add itself. See, think it's some kind of a hoax. There's something fixed up between them. They can't understand it. Until that man is born again, then when he's born again, then he's in line of fellowship because he's a new creature, creation. That old, suspicious, doubting character he was is dead. Now he's a new creation. So you see, he don't have to add anything to his, his now because it's automatically be added. Notice, you must be born again. And when you're born again, you can't be born again without having faith. That's right. So you see, on my chart here, I got the very foundation. Faith is the foundation of it all. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And reward of those that diligently seek him. Amen. Wait a minute. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Amen. him. Now, if Jacob had to wrestle with the angel to change his walk, what do you think you got to do? Amen. Hmm? What do you think you got to do? Somebody said, well, can I lose my salvation? No. If it was real the first time, you can't. But that's the thing you got to make sure it's real. Woo. Come on, somebody. See, he must be. And when you are skeptic of the Bible, when you're skeptic of the word being right, you just might as well stay back until first you believe it. Hmm? Listen, you got to look at Peter. And you got to say, Lord, this is me. 
this is mine, and I keep praying and praying and praying and praying till I see these things added to me. Because you got to understand it's the Holy Ghost that puts his approval. Because every time we think we got something, we make a mess. And I'm going to say it like this. That's way down, down the road on my notes. But a, a chain is only strong at its weakest link. Wherever you're weak at, that's where Satan breaks it. And you know what? It's like a domino effect. Y'all ever seen bees on a string? It breaks and it goes, everything. All those bees that's been added on that string break and scatter. Why? Because at that point of weakness, it destroyed the whole thing. And that's why oftentimes you feel like you're not a Christian. Because at that weak link is where Satan keeps getting you. And he scatters everything else, and guess what? You got to start adding the bees all up again. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. And you see, by the grace of God, that's all right. Just don't ever give up. Amen. You don't give up. You keep adding, 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 adding. And how do you add? By faith and prayer. Right? Because you can't do it. The Bible said, what have... What house? What house can you build me? He said, listen, no, no house. He said, the heavens is my, is my throne and the earth is my footstool. He said, but you have prepared, prepared a body. So God has prepared you. Amen. How is he going to prepare you? First of all, he's got to bring the fire. If we're going to abide behind in between the cherubims, you've got to have all this worldly stuff out of you. But God is able if you pray. Amen. Right? I'll never forget it. Brother Brown said, those foolish virgins asked, you know, uh, uh, the uh, wise, give me of your all. They said, you go pray up. Amen. You go pray up. It's in prayer. Amen. That's why Satan robs us. Yeah. Amen. That's where he robs us because he knows that the weakest saint, if they fall on their knees, amen, amen. they can whip the devil. Amen. That's the word. Any time, any place, any condition, anywhere. So down on your knees is where you get your victory. Nobody don't have to tell you where you're coming short. All of us know. As individuals, we know where we're coming short, what you're going to do about it. When you realize the saints of God, the Bible says we are encompassed about with so great a crowd, cloud of witness. They cheering and says, come on, boy, do better. <laughs> Yay, you can do better. Come on. They're cheering us on. Amen. Looking at us and says, we can't move until you move. Amen. God chose you to be the cream of the cream of the crop. Come on, somebody. That's why the devil fights us. We're in the worst age there ever was. But God is using the greatest weapon he ever can. And that's the word. That's why the word had to be restored. Amen. Had to be. Until you come and you and I come, listen, you can't even go up to up the scale without having faith in the word. Right. Now, understand, listen, Brother Ram said, now, he says, listen, he goes on and talks about he did not come to build an organization. Christ never sent me to build an organization. Christ sent me to build individuals to the statue of Jesus Christ that might be the powerhouse. Now, I, I read you that, the 11th yeah. verse, the entrance. He says, listen, I was ordained to fulfill that scripture. Hmm? I was ordained to feel that scripture dwelling. Listen, he said, Jesus Christ, that he might be the powerhouse dwelling place of his Holy Spirit by his word. Uh huh. By his word Amen. built of an individual to that place, not build an organization, a great denomination, but build the individual to sons and daughters of God. He said, that's the idea. Amen. See, add to your faith virtue to your virtue. Not at knowledge. Well, now. Come on to a place. Now, when they began to say, well, we don't have to accept that today. You do have to. It must be. The scriptures cannot lie. There are no private interpretation. The Bible said you just believe it the way it is written there. See, you've got to have these things. And the only way you ever be able to have them is to have heaven born knowledge. There it is. See, that's why he says I was out there in the woods. He said, and I waited for God to give me this. 
See, it was heaven bone. He said, I couldn't preach that. I, I, I couldn't. That ain't me. God had to put the scriptures together. And now I've got this heaven born knowledge and I'm giving it to you. Here is the entrance. You want to make a rapture? Here it is. There are no private interpretations. Anyway, there's no private interpretation. The Bible said, you must believe it the way it is written here. See? Heaven-born knowledge. Heaven-born knowledge will vindicate the word. See? You've got to believe. Now, not make-believe. None of these are make-beliefs. See? If you try to say, uh, don't be a blackbird putting peacock peacock feathers in yourself, because they'll fall right out. They're not naturally grown in there. So you must understand the supernatural God must be supernaturally grown. If I could put it that way, it must supernaturally allow itself to be expressed. Because he says, now listen, you've got to understand that even uh, 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 Christian science can show all of these things almost. All of these kind of virtues and things like that. But you see... They can't come all the way up. They always will have a weak link. Why? And it's put on. Mind over matter. But I tell you, slap a man hard enough, I tell you what, he'll forget his Christian science. (laughs) He will. He'll forget his Christian science. But if it's God, he'll turn the other cheek. Come on, somebody. That's the kind we want. Amen. We don't want the, the kind we practice. We want the kind that lives. Amen. Like Brother Branham said, it's got to be seven live voices. Ooh, I love this. The Bible said, don't you worry about it. I'm talking about Israel now. Seventh verse here. It says, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who have heard such a thing? Who have seen such a things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as, for as soon as Zion travaileth, she brought forth her child. How oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> oh. So it's like this. Uh-uh. Any woman in here know what travailing is? Huh? Y'all know what travailing is? <laughs> it's going to take something. But soon as you prevail, it ain't going to take that long. But you got to get to the place that you wanted so much till you travail for it. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Shall God put a desire in you to come to this? And then cause you not to have it? No, 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 no. I know he's talking about a nation, but he's talking about us too in just a moment. You'll see. Listen, he says, cause, cause you to bring forth, said the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? Said thy, Lord, thy God, rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All you that moan for her, that ye may suck. And be satisfied with the breast of her consolations. That you may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. Y'all know what milk out is? Have y'all ever seen a baby? Hey Amen. When that baby milk out, oh, he's looked like he's seeing angels and stars and everything. I mean, his eyes are just batting and he's smiling from ear to ear. He's milked out. That's the way it is supposed to be a Christian. Come on, somebody. Amen. You and I are supposed to milk out on the word. Hallelujah, for thus saith the Lord, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. Woo! And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall she suck, she shall be born upon her side and be dangled upon her knees. And as one whose mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And who is Jerusalem? The bride of Jesus Christ. She is the Jerusalem. Is that right? Come on, somebody. Listen, Psalms 127, 1 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. 
Hello? It is God who's keeping. God who's, God who's building the house. He's still a carpenter's son. Come on, somebody. And he still, he laid the foundation. Amen. Amen. Zerubbabel said that same stone that was rejected, God had made the head of the corner. Love the Lord. Forming and shaping the heart. Why, at of all times in our day, when the prophet God was on the scene, he brought out the scripture. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He said, theologians, scientists and all, thought that scripture was wrong. Because they say man thinketh in his head. He said, but science has discovered that in the heart of a man is a small little place about the size of a pinhead that has no blood vessels. And he says, that's where God abides. Amen. See, you don't need a whole lot of him. You just need a little bit. Hi, oh, yeah. come on. All you need is a pinhead. Whatever it is, think about it now. Think about it. That little computer chip controls everything. So you look at this, he says, listen, all you need is that. And let that be a pure seed. If that seed is pure, it'll bring forth pure God. Hello? Now, God is powerful because he said a mustard seed, and he likened himself as a mustard seed. Amen. And he said that mustard seed is pure. But look at the tree it brings forth. Huh? The Bible said that mustard seed grows up to be one of the largest trees there is. And every fowl of the air come and lodge in it. Come on, somebody. Because I'm going to tell you something about the seal of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That seal is recognized coming and going. Now, let me get here just a minute. Give me a few minutes. I'm not going to keep you long because I want you to really hold to what I said tonight. Like I said, this is the foundation of what I want to finish ministering on Sunday if the Lord tarry. If not, I'll keep going until then. Now, first of all, we understand you've got to recognize it. <laughs> and you've got to understand, amen, that you can't remain where you are. None of us can remain where we are. The whole point about this message is for you to examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. If you are in the faith, then you ought to realize and recognize, Lord, or ask God, where am I? Well, usually he don't have to ask you that. You wouldn't have to ask him that because all of us know. If you're still getting hot tempered, that means you ain't, you, you below temperance. <laughs> that means, right? You below temperance. If you're still getting upset and carrying on like you ain't, ain't yeah, you still, you below tempers. But that's okay, maybe you got knowledge. Because I'm going to show you by the grace of God, wherever the weak link is, is that where you, that's where you're breaking. Before you can get perfection, you got to conquer that. Amen. That's right. Faith, now, let me put it this way, folks, let me, let me say it like this. How many, look through the Old Testament. Was it Gideon who won the wall? Or was it God who won the war for Gideon? Amen. Did David win the wars? Or was it God who won the wars for David? Amen. Did Joshua win the wars? No, or was it God that won the war for Joshua? Amen. See, it was a promise. And all Joshua, David, and Gideon had to do is believe what God said, and God made him a winner. Amen. And all you got to do is believe what God said, and God will make you a winner. Amen. Paul said, we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank God who gives us the victory. Amen. So, we have not because we ask not. Faith is a foundation, right? Peter starts off with faith, right? Because you can't even start the building until the foundation is laid. And the foundation is you must be born again. Right? Ain't no use in you starting. You must be born again. Amen. Of the water and of the spirit. Right? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, when that life, you say, well, brother, when does it really take place? Understand, when that life comes in you, 
Because the word of God can't lie. The life comes in you when you say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Jesus said, at that time, you have passed from death unto life. At that time, you have passed from death unto life. You're still as dirty and filthy as you've ever been. But in there is a life that's going to change you if you feed it. That's your, ba- that's your foundation. You see, a lot of people die at that point because they won't continue to feed it. Right? But you see, if you are absolutely elected, God says, ooh, this is what I was telling somebody the other day. I said, I don't care nothing about no Greek and Hebrew. That ain't what gives me life. The Bible said the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. Not the dictionary or the commentary or the whatever area. It's just Jesus. The Holy Ghost. I, I, come on, if I can't read or write, I'll still more, know more amen. than the theologians, everyone that have gotten their doctorate degree. Amen. amen. Why? Because I got the Holy Ghost and they don't. Amen. And even somebody said, well, you need the Greek to understand. No, sir. The Bible said the Holy Ghost will lead. When somebody comes with your Greek, stop them right there because they're confused about this Holy Ghost. They don't know nothing about it. Why? Because you got to, in order to understand the scriptures, you got to be born. Amen. Let me say it like this. Who understands God but God? Amen. Amen. And an eagle understands an eagle because it's got the same life. Yeah. And you don't understand God because you got the same life. Amen. Faith. So you got to be born again. You got to have God on the inside, right? That's where your foundation starts, right? It's way before baptism. Baptism is just the outward show that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Yet it's still necessary. Just as necessary as communion. Is that right? So you can't even go any further if you don't have the baptism. You're right there at faith. That's as far as your house has been built. Virtue. And I ain't got, there's a lot to it, and I'm going to hit this back and forth, back and forth. Virtue is strength and power. Must be able to give it out. You must have it before you can give it out. Right? Because remember the woman, amen, who touched Jesus? Jesus turned and said, who touched me? He said, virtue has gone out of me. Brother Banner, when he was here, he had virtue. Because the Bible, they tell us, amen, there were many times he almost couldn't even make it to his seat because he was so weak. Virtue is the power of God. It's the strength of God. Even scientists have said that when people lay hands on the sick, they have seen the light of God leave them and go to another person. Scientists know it's true. Hello, somebody. And you can't have virtue or even know that you got it without having faith that you have it. Oh, I feel like I got virtue. No, I got virtue because he's in there. It's his virtue, not mine. That's why the prophet God said Jesus never healed one person. He said, I can't do nothing except the Father show me. And neither you and neither me, I, no, nobody. Jesus Christ is the healer. Right? Now, here it is. Knowledge. Knowledge to judge whether it's right or wrong. See, the word is right and every man be a lie. The Bible don't contradict itself. You must get rid of everything that is scripturally scripture that isn't scripturally scriptural based. I don't care how real it seems, right? For instance, you have women preachers, and all of them say God visited them. All of them say they've seen visions and everything else, and that's why they're there. And the Bible says, according to the knowledge of the Word, they are not supposed to preach it. Right. So where do you go with the signs, the wonders, the visions and the experience? Remember, in this last day, in Elijah time, amen, 400 prophets was deceived. Pentecostal brethren deceived because they rested on experience and not the word. Is that okay? Woo, help us, Lord. The word is the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
He keeps all of his promises. Don't need education from theological school. The Holy Ghost will lead and guide me into all truth. I'm leaving it right there. That's knowledge. Knowledge to know that the word is right and it doesn't need an interpreter because God is his own interpreter. Right? Temperance. Woo! Mean Holy Spirit temperance. How to control, I know y'all, tongue. Not be a tattler. And fly off when somebody offends you. Amen. Amen. Yay! Yep, that's where we need it. You haven't gone no further than that. You still acknowledge, so you got to get some temperance. In order to have temperance, he's got to seal it in you. There's got to be some victories, some hot fires getting all up in your face. Right? It's the truth. They got in Jesus' face. And the Bible said he was like a sheep, dumb, wouldn't open his mouth. That's the life that got to be present in us. Not just present, but revealed or or manifest, excuse me, right? Not a tattler. Girl, let me tell you. (laughs) Hey, the pre... uh, the men talk as much as women too. Nowadays, you know, they talk just as much. They do. Amen. Come on, somebody. And when someone offends you, right? When you rail upon, when you railed upon, and you rail not back. Somebody really railing on you. Don't say nothing. If you're gonna say anything, bless them. Bless those that curse you. That's Jesus' word. Right? No, here it is. I'm going to tell you something. I have been so guilty. Because sometimes God gives you secrets. Hello? He says, listen. He said, if you come into your secret closet, I'll tell you things secretly. That means if it's secret, he ain't just supposed to tell nobody. (laughs) He didn't tell everybody. He told you. And how many times you try to tell people secrets and they don't know nothing about what you're trying to tell them because you ain't supposed to tell them. I'm guilty. You think they're going to rejoice. Woo, hallelujah. And they don't. Come on, somebody. Y'all can at least say amen. Because that's the truth. We all are guilty. Right? I said secrets now. There's a difference between praise and all that. I'm talking about secrets. And sometimes people don't even want to hear that. But anyway, let's go on. Y'all all right with that? I come, listen, listen, in temperance, we have one thing. And that is when somebody call you names. I, like I said the other day, I had people calling me two days. To, and then I was running the other day and I was crossing the street. And I was still somewhat like on the edge with the rocks. And the man said, I, I saw it. I felt it coming. Get on the sidewalk. I like, <laughs> you know what I said? You move over. <laughs> See? And guess what? Just as soon as I did that, the Holy Ghost says, wrong. Because the car's for the street. Right? Somehow I should have made, just kept my mouth shut and just praise God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, but God showed me. It's a good thing when God show you, amen, where you're wrong. So you say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Strengthen me. Brother Benham used the word vulcanize. Because every, every uh, 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 virtue seals itself to the other. And it strengthens. Hmm? It strengthens each other. All right? So we look at these things and, and understand that when you got faith, virtue, and knowledge that God's word is amen, 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 amen. Nothing contradicts. It's true. It's going to give you temperance. Is that all right? And it's going to also give you patience. See? Because our thing, when you really know God's word is true, you learn how to wait. 
this is the way the prophet God says, not only just patient is, but he said patient, patience with God. Patience with God. It ain't just with each other. We know we got a little of that. But most of our problem comes from not being patient with God. Genuine faith gives genuine patience. And Noah, listen, I want you to understand every one of these virtues operate by faith. Every one of them operate by faith. They can't even move without it. You got to first believe that God is going to give you all this. The Bible said of men who come to God first believe that he is God and that he's a rewarder. What is he going to reward you for? What are you going to God for? The Bible said it's a throne of grace. So therefore, you, are, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to worry about whether you merit it or not. It's already unmerited favor for you. It is grace. So he gives you that opportunity to come. Listen, you and I will really have a rough time if God has to say, well, why didn't you do it? I gave you everything you ever needed to make it. I made it as easy as I possibly could for you. And why didn't you do it? Don't tell me it's not easy. The problem is we don't want to die to ourselves. This old lazy flesh don't want to buckle the knees. Right? This old lazy flesh. And I tell you what, we can run to wherever we want to run. We won't even worry about time, especially when it comes to shopping. And, but when it comes down to prayer. Huh? Oh, it's true. We can fellowship with each other for hours and with Jesus it's only 10, 15 minutes, if that much. Ain't no travailing there. No travailing. Now, listen, and I, I'm, I'm not going to worry you because I'm, I'm going to stop right here on patience because I don't want to finish all of this. I want you to go home, and I want you to listen. If you've got a way of listening to Statue of a Perfect Man, so when I come, you'll be spiritually ready. Amen. Amen. Patience. Patience with God. Genuine faith. Give genuine patience. Noah had patience with God for what? 120 years. Oh, Lord, I, listen, I'm going to have to say it. God, give me the Holy Ghost. Did you repent? Were you baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Then wait on it. Amen. They had to wait, and you do too. Maybe your wait is a little longer, but he promised it. Amen. See, so the devil can't fool me. The, I ain't going to get it. Yes, I am. Amen. He promised it. it. I don't care how long it took. It took no 120 years. He waited. You know, Brother Bell said, God will test you too. He told Noah, I'm going to shut the door. Let the people know it's going to rain. Yeah. Noah said, oh, boy, it's going to rain. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. He told me, and listen, we, the door is shut. And God waited seven more days. Seven days. Noah looked really silly, but he believed God. Amen. Yep, he never thought, well, made I, maybe I made a mistake and I need to come up out of this ark. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God made sure he didn't because it was God who shut the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, he was predestinated to take that trip, and so are you. Amen. You and I are predestinated to make a rapture, and God will lead you to it, Amen. or he's going to drive you. Amen. And you don't want him to drive you now, but he's more than able to do it. Right? If it's not here today, it will be here tomorrow. Right? When it comes to healing, deliverance, whatever Amen. the case may be. Listen, I'm not trying to tell you to manufacture something if it ain't there. Amen. Healing, sickness, whatever it is. You go to the doctor. Yeah. I just read what Brother Brown said. You know, there was a lady who actually believed that going to the doctor was sinful. He says, not so. It is not a sin. And you know what he eventually told that lady? Go take your medicine. There's a balance to this thing, folks. But the devil will make you think you're not even a Christian because you don't believe in medicine. Hello? Jesus could have spoke to that woman, but he took spittle and clay. I'm that man that put, put in that eye. Jesus could have said, you're here, but he said, go wash in the pool of Salon. See, there must have been something in there that would, if it wasn't just obedience, something. 
So God has more than one method of healing and delivering. Y'all love the Lord? God will try your patience, make you wait a little longer than you expect to. Right? See, there will come a resurrection. Some may sleep, but there will be one. Right? Think about it. Everybody throughout the ages had to wait. Wait. Can you actually be the Hebrew boys? Waiting on God. And God still ain't answering. And you're approaching the fire. Hmm? Yeah, but they said even if he don't deliver us, we know he's able. Amen. See, that's the attitude. That's the right attitude. Amen. Oh, my God. You, yeah, I'm going to wait on God no matter what. Amen. And listen, I'm a, you, that's, that's where we've got we've to understand that the promises to God is true. We can look back and say he kept every one, one, of, one of them. Every age has been kept by God, every one of them. And God will not leave this, this age undone. There will be divine love manife- uh, uh, manifest excuse me, in a bride. There will be. Ain't no ands, ifs, or buts about it. It might not be a great number, but there will be those. And I'm so thankful to say I'm one of them. Let's stand. I wish I could quiz you right now to see how many of us understood what's being said. Because I want you to understand by the grace of God, what did I say the, the victory is on your knees? Now you got to fight the devil to get on your knees. I don't care whether you feel it. Feeling got nothing to do with it. It would be good to feel it. But if you don't feel it, you stay there. You talk to him because you know he hears you. Come on, somebody. You think God can't hear you on your knees when he can hear what's in your head? Every thought that goes through your head, God hears it. Come on, somebody. I might can't hear, but he hears every bit of it, whether it's good or bad. Come on, somebody. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, people, he's waiting on us. He's waiting on us. Amen. If we've been disconnected, if we've got out of line, get back in line. I have. You know, when you see yourself, amen, you've drifted on this side and maybe this and that. Whenever you find yourself doubting something that God has said already, listen, the thing is to repent. Get on your knees and repent. Because this is not a man, this is not a message, this is not an hour of private interpretation. Everybody in this area, everybody got a private interpretation for what they think the word means. That's why God had to send a prophet with the right interpretation. Because it wasn't his. Like I said, a prophet is like a eunuch. He has no seed. Only God speaks through him. He's built that way. You love God? Heavenly Father, God, we come before you as humbly as we know how. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Lord, we believe that we have your Holy Spirit, but we also know there's a growing Spirit. There's a maturing, Lord. And Father, that's what we are here for tonight, that you put such a hunger and thirst in your people. That after tonight, they will seek you every day. Oh, until the fullness of Christ is made manifested in them. This is not a group thing, Lord. This is an individual thing. And I pray, Father God, that you will do just that for us tonight. Grant it in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus on earth I long to be like him all through life journey from earth to glory.
Jesus to love like Jesus oh to love like Jesus all of thy long to, to love like him all through life journey come I just want to stress one thing. It is the grace of God that God gives us space to repent. Amen? Because remember, amen, he gave Jezebel space to repent, and she wouldn't do it. So think about the grace of God that he gives us space to repent, and when he gives us that space, we must repent lest we become like Jezebel. Amen. You love the Lord? He always would give you that space, but you've got to take advantage.